Hello, greetings and salutations. I'm Jason Carl from White Wolf, and this is Seattle by Night, our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle set in the Pacific Northwest. Gothic grunge, perhaps. If you will. If you, if you will. will. Right. Mm -hmm. Vampires might wear gothic grunge. They could also just be, be hipsters. That's Ballard. a different kind of vampire. I don't... Energy vampire. I don't want to hear <laughs> any ill spoken of Ballard during this game. Wait, no, I just... Hipsters came up. I love Ballard. It's great. I love it. I'm a big fan. Huge fan. <laughs> Oh my god, I really do feel like you're threatening Whoa. everyone into this. Ballard? Oh, I'm a big fan. It's the nice best. <laughs> nice I'm saved. trying to be Ballard, Betty. Nicely saved. Yeah. If I want to struggle to find street parking, whew, Ballard's where the I'm going. That's where I go. That's where I go. <laughs> yeah, that's why you live there. <laughs> and then you just walk. Capital is way worse. Yeah. For being honest. In every way. Capital Hill is a hell of a 100%. Out. It is. Perhaps, if they're successful, your vampires will actually get to visit some of these neighborhoods. That's the fantasy. What about Ballard. Fremont? Oh, that's like a quirky little <laughs> spot. I believe that is the center of the universe. Fremont. Fremont? Fremont's live. Yeah. Self-proclaimed. Home to Paseos? No, no, mm -hmm. no. Fremont, have you been to any of the... There's a puzzle room in Fremont. That's like the best puzzle room I've ever been to. <laughs> I've oh. never done... Like an escape room? You would mur... Oh my gosh, you've I've never, never done, done, done it? Room. You would murder wow. this. Sounds like a nightmare. Really? This is your true medium. If I got an escape room for you, okay. Do you want to go to the escape no, room together after this no, game? Day? <laughs> it's called the Vanishing Act. Yes, I do. <laughs> Just set it up on set it up on your phone at, after this game. Vanishing Act. The vanishing Act. And then wow. let people know what you thought of it later. Has anyone never? Has anyone not escaped from an escape room? Like, have, they, have there ever been cases Sadly, where yes. like we'll never know? People have or not just like gone in and not come out. Sadly, yes. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Disappeared. Do they let? Vanished. Do they eventually let you out? You just, uh, no, they're still in there. Well, to, that's, to me, that, I think that's good. Yeah, like, I have to know that there's some there has to be stakes. Consequences. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Totally. You're gonna teach these people. Maybe yeah. that's what happened to that vampire. Maybe he wasn't hiding in there. Maybe, Maybe he was, was doing an escape room. Maybe it was a nautical theme. Do you mean? Room. Well, speaking. Do you of mean vampires. the lick? <laughs> speaking of lick. <laughs> oh, I said the V word. <laughs> yeah. Which lick and or vampire are you? You are. Oh, now as. Uh, you may know, I am Jerry Holkins uh, in real life, but in my vampiric guise, uh, I am uh, Jameson Keene, uh, a uh, ostensibly dapper individual, provided that he is currently using one of his powers on you. Uh, the actual base model, a lot of jaw, real low, swinging around. Like swinging around. Yeah, he wears it low. Yeah, I wear it low. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is really gross. <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> next up. Next up, uh, I am. Hi, I'm Dora. M my character is Amanda. She is an internal student, a daddy's girl, and um, quite new to being a vampire. Still figuring it out and pretending that she's pretty good at anything that comes down. And she has. It's, it's worked it's for her. So or goes far. down. Yeah. yeah. She's. It's worked for her it. so far. It really it has. has. It really has. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah. It's worked really, for everybody. <laughs> it totally has. Yeah. For me. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. I'm Jasmine, that bronze girl Bueller. And I play Betty. And she is our resident La Sombra. Mm -hmm. And she's currently flirting with the idea of maybe being involved with the Camarilla mm -hmm. in a more official capacity since. She's only been involved with them in sort of off the books kind of way. Well, we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll talk. Uh, hey, I'm Mike, cool guy Krahulik. <laughs> and that is what we call you. Yep, that's <laughs> totally my name. It's been my name for a long time. Uh, but today I'm playing uh, Tony Tom Hollandaise. Tom, well, he's based on, yeah. So Tom Hollandaise is my character. He's a tattoo artist, he's a brand new vampire lick. He's not great at it. He hates it. He's a no bullshit kind of guy, and there seems like a lot of bullshit in the vampire world. No offense, I'm mad. None taken. Yeah. <laughs> there is a there is a lot of bullshit in the there's vampire some, world. There are some rituals. I didn't just make up cool guy for that. Because mm -hmm. I heard you say that you yeah, have like a No, memory. I think I've heard people call you that around. A couple people have. One of my always. one of my CG. favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Behind your backs. 
CG. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. One of my favorite things to say about Vampire is that it is a very, very moral role-playing game about very immoral creatures. Yeah. Uh, and the corollary of that is a lot of the choices you have to make are bad, and yet you still have to choose. So you're, you're right. Vampires do have to put up a lot of, with a lot of bullshit. And it's often a matter of choosing which bullshit you will put up with. <laughs> right. In the recent past, however, by which I mean last episode... There was less bullshit and more awesome, at least for your coterie. It turned out good. You yeah. <clears throat> reported back to Mr. Drew at the Furcrest Motel in Tacoma. And uh, Mr. Drew was a little surprised to see you. And there was some information provided to you that leads you to believe that there was a lot more about your mission that uh, wasn't on the up and up. Things that uh, didn't meet the eye, obviously. But you learned a little bit about the vampire you woke up, Mr. Gravenstein. You learned a little bit about the Anarchs. You met Odette, the mm-hmm. Hound, who told you uh, something about the current situation and how things work. You got probationary status with the Camarilla, right? You got an invitation to Elysium, the big fancy party. You got money. And then Odette, now owes Tom and Betty yeah. a favor. Yeah, we represented have bullets. by bullets. Slugs that she uh, removed from her own body. So is this the kind of game where I should note like how much money I got? The precise amount doesn't matter so much. You've got, uh, I've got a score on your sheet coral resources. resources. Oh, whoops. It's on the second page. Upper left. Upper left. Wait, Tom right. has a, a dot of. That, you've got a, a, a dot that? of resources currently, which represents your your cash, oh, your see. ready cash, and your cash. I show two dots in resources. Upper left, under merits. Right. His see. sheet is different because <gasps> yeah. mine is here. Which yeah, is yeah mine's different. And My sheet is so laid great. out differently. It's totally different. Yeah, it's differently. totally different. No okay. worries. Patrick fucked mine up yeah. really bad. So I can't even Essentially, the uh, <laughs> let's take care of our. <laughs> I'll see you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> I'm going to get my All car and go home. <laughs> Housekeeping. Yes. So, first things first, before we get to how much money you've got. Um, everyone who took superficial willpower damage, Amanda and Tom, that goes away. It refreshes because this is a new night. Your superficial okay. willpower damage is healed. You have all your willpower available to you now to oh, okay. use all over again. So, so, did Betty have like a guest coffin? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Mm-hmm. Now, Amanda. No, it's, like, it's like a tandem motorcycle. There's like a <laughs> coffin, and then there's like a slightly smaller <laughs> coffin to the right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like some of those Russian nesting dolls. Yeah. Inflatable right. coffin. <clears throat> Mine, it's not like, it's not really like a coffin. Oh. I, just, I didn't mean to assume. Yeah, yeah. It's more of like a sensory deprivation chamber. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. Yeah. Oh, interesting. But light proof. Yeah, yeah. The light and that's curve. the important part. Yes, you live in a rather a palatial home in Bellevue. Is that not Don't right? Tell them that. Oh, he's, Tom's he's, impressed. He's seen it oh. though. Yeah, right? I mean, you, Tom you knows. You invited him now. over. Yeah, that's true. I yeah, I don't, I don't want him sleeping out someplace yeah. unsafe. He's, he's seen where you hang your cape now. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Under a pile of leaves. He's scared to even use like the towels. Yeah, there's there's no don't food, him. Don't thankfully. Him, really. yeah. <laughs> so there's just no food anywhere. <laughs> yeah. you just, just like, an unused kitchen. You just pull like as much toilet paper out as you can and use that. <laughs> I make a nest for myself on the floor and I lay down. It's okay, Alfred, to take care of it. You also meet my butler. Oh, oh wow. wow. Alfred. Or at least he's nicknamed Alfred. Yes. For real? What's he? Yeah. Can you describe him for us a little bit, for Tom? Yeah, what, what he's would Tom see? like six foot two. Okay. He's very tall, very slender. And he's an elderly gentleman, um, about probably like in his sixties. Okay. And will he tuck me into my sensory chamber? Yeah. Thank you. He definitely will. He's very kind. He's like a very good Catholic boy. Betty, is this a let the right one in type situation? <sighs> no. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't watch horror movies. Well, don't watch this one. Is he um, like a family? Yes. Butler? Yes, and, and you, you get that sense him? when you see us together. Okay. That I'm he's very yeah. close with him. He, okay. he clearly is, uh, he feel, he, he, um, his demeanor toward Betty is almost paternal, mm-hmm. as though he were her father, or, or certainly more than Avon Killer. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There is definite, I would say, clear affection mm-hmm. between the two of them. Right? And uh, he, d- he doesn't act like a butler. 
Okay. So he makes like condescending remarks when yeah. we come in. He has, oh, no, wow. like, he has no fear. I uh, see we're running on our own clock this hour. <laughs> you know, like that type <laughs> of person. He makes okay. pointed comments yeah. about yeah. your ruined yeah. shoes yeah. and your yeah. disheveled appearance and you know, such your, your choice of friends. He's going to ask you for your shoes so he can go okay. clean them. And he's very like... He's taking my Crocs? Yeah, he's going to go okay. dust oh, them God, off for you. Can you imagine him these Crocs? And there's a sense of I want those back just the way... Well, maybe a little better than you got him. Are you sure, sir? We could outfit <laughs> you with a nice pair of Mephistos. Something. A wizard? Like. No, I just want my Crocs. <laughs> As you wish, sir. Wizard. He gives you a long, suffering no. look. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the friends you make, the people you bring into our home. Where's the shitter? <laughs> he merely points. At a place on the floor. <laughs> in the corner. In a milkshake. I have a problem with dairy. You should know I have a problem with dairy. So oh I'll keep it in mind, sir. Don't get any milk or anything. Like, don't bring no any milk. No milk. I think we can guarantee no milk. Amanda, your haven, of course, is equally palatial, but in a very different part of the, mm -hmm. of the east side. Yes. But let's, let's deal with your, your health issue at the moment. You okay. went to sleep when the sun came in the sky. Yes. At an aggravated health level. When you wake up the following night, you have the option of leaving it alone or trying to heal it. And as we saw last episode, in order to heal an aggravated health level, you need to make three rouse checks and risk getting a lot hungrier. It's up uh, to you. I'm gonna keep it. You're gonna keep it for tonight. Yes. At any point this evening, you can change your mind and attempt to heal it, but you must immediately make those three rouse checks. Okay. And uh, does like, do, would the scar completely go away? And it the would scar be is going to be there as long as you don't heal that health level. Okay. Which is sure dope. It's so now, cool. could you get, if you if you chose not to heal a tattoo, could a vampire get tattooed? Unfortunately not. It's In, not aggravated damage. It's not right? aggravated damage. It's not so, aggravated right. damage. Okay. Um, the act of healing damage or mending your undead flesh is yeah. a willful act. You must consciously choose to call upon the power of your blood to do it. So you don't have to heal damage at all if you don't want to. Okay. But the tattoo. I feel like Tom would have asked that. Um, yeah. Um, I think he would have actually. But but also people people do some people do get thermal tattoos. They get functionally speaking a brand scars a brand. of fire. Right. I'm not yeah. Sure if that would work. I doubt uh, it. Yeah. The, mm. the, the heat may not be intense enough because it's not life threatening. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm. Oh, like aggravated <laughs> means your life or death. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, so. it means killing. Okay. Damage, right? Real mortification. So Amanda, you've chosen to keep your aggravated health level, your wound, yeah. uh, but all your willpower is refreshed. You're no longer at a, a willpower disadvantage. The same with Tom. Perfect. And now the next order of housekeeping is to check for hunger. Each and every one of you, please, in your own time, make a rouse check to see if you get hungrier when you wake up the following night. Tom, unfortunately, your beast did rears you, its ugly you, head. Is that what the skull it's fangs mean? It's a failure, means? unfortunately. <laughs> it's, as though it were a blank hmm. side. In okay. this case, it's just an ordinary failure, but that means you go from uh, hunger one to hunger two. Yeah. And that little voice inside your head, the teeny distant voice of the fellow you killed in Montreal speaks oh, to you. Shit. Well, now that you have melded me, you might as well kill someone else, no? <laughs> that is really yeah, good. Very lonely in here. I it's, just want to know not, who might be. It's not so amusing to be dead, you know. I crave company. Oh my God. She yeah. must, your hostess must. She must have snacks. You should avail yourself too sweet. You don't have to act, of course, on the voice, but your hunger does increase. I'm going to just make a note that you've gone from hunger one to hunger two. And is it, it, it yeah. in, a, in a coterie? Is it normal? I think it actually is normal. I've seen a lot of games like online mm -hmm. for <laughs> half the table to do their hunger checks, and then the other half it doesn't. Normally, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I hear. Yeah, I what about that. Betty? Oh, Betty succeeds. Nice, Betty. The Where? beast does not speak to you. You remain at hunger two. So you hit him. Can't uh, see the die. She's in hungry native. Fail, your, your father's voice whispers to you, encouraging you, my little girl, to do what is it in your nature to do. 
Make mm. me proud. Be the best vampire that you can be. You're such a disappointment in life. Please, please don't disappoint me. <laughs> Holy shit. Just excel in this mm. new arena. <laughs> Pour the so salt Amanda, all Amanda, over Amanda, do you go from one to two or two to three? One to two. One to two. Yeah. And... And then, that's Jameson right. Keen, right? <laughs> and then we're done, right? Now. If only the world of darkness were fair. I don't like it. I hate it. Oh, Dang. You get hungry. It's this place. God, I hope they got fucking hors d'oeuvres up at this mm. party, though. Right? They might. We, Please. I don't think we should go, Peckish. The light snacks, Uncle. The light snacks never satisfy you. Ugh. Something more robust. It's not like we're having tea. Maybe a nice red. So. Merlot. At two hunger each, you of course all have the option to snack before you go to Elysium if you want to. Mm-hmm. And that means imbibing the prepared food that you mm-hmm. have, or hunting, or getting delivery, or takeout. Um, however you choose to roll is cool. Or you can roll with it as it is and go down to Elysium at hunger level two. If we go to Elysium at hunger mm-hmm. level two, and we're asked to make rolls there. Yeah, yeah hunger two, could increase. Yeah, two of every dice is going to be red, right? Mm-hmm. Two if every you're dice hunger level two, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So yeah, third. It's it's like yeah. escalating. Hmm. It is a spiral. It's a it's a, it's a little like playing uh, blackjack or roulette in Vegas, right? You know, eventually, eventually you're going to lose. How far can you push your bet until that happens? Mm-hmm. Your monstrous nature is such that. It forces you to do unpleasant things to avoid doing even worse things, which is kind of the the, the nature of yeah. vampire, and also reflected in the the kind of the unofficial slogan of the game, which is "A beast I am, lest a beast I become." Hmm. Kind of sucks. Yeah, Tom is not wrong. So yeah, yeah so it, it's Snack City over there. It sounds like. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you uh, you've you, got uh, stuff to eat. You've got stuff prepared. Yes. It's not going to help Tom at all. How come? Whoa! Because there is an unfortunate additional truth to being a vampire. Betty's preferred diet um, comes prepackaged. Yeah. Which is bagged blood. That's fine. Well, the process of bagging blood once it leaves the human body means it's fractionated and stuff is added to it. It doesn't bother me. I'm okay. Unfortunately, the vampire body doesn't. Do a, doesn't do well punished. with that kind of blood. No. How come? How come Betty can handle it? Betty's a special my, case. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. game terms, she has a uh, like, okay. she has a merit called I mean, the Iron, Iron Gullet, Gullet, which lets her consume the bag blood. Can I explain this to you? Okay. okay. But I'm not gonna. Okay, I am a lady. I'm not gonna eat in front of a guest. <laughs> that's now, and that's, that's I not think me. It's I think it's super believable that Betty because she does have other guests and does entertain as a vampire, maybe has some bag blood that hasn't gone through the process yet that she keeps for visitors who need it. And Tom could eat that. The other stuff. Because he, 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 listen, so, he needs electrolytes. Yeah, okay. If needs, it's, you know. No, if it's believable. <laughs> I think so. It's better than the alternative I, I was going to suggest. I don't think Alfred, it would, he would be Which so Which is that I do have that. hunting hounds and horses, and you could... Could feed from animals. Uh... It's whatever you prefer. Just not the ones I like, please. Mm, Just, I'm not know. sure that I'm ready to eat a dog. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. I'm hungry. Old spot. Um, I think Alfred would offer you some of the some of the okay. reserve some of the reserve. Good. Alfred would be mortified if any guest of yours yes. went oh. hungry. Yes. And mm-hmm. so I find it very yeah. believable that you have a small supply available. Yeah. And I wink at Alfred and I say, maybe a pint glass. The gentleman. So usually he brings mine in like a little martini glass oh, with mm-hmm. a, a yeah. decorative olive. I obviously don't eat it. But. No, no. He warms yours up in the microwave so it's nice and warm. Nice. And yeah. Hey, you know what? Yeah. Thanks, Alfred. Brings it with a, a pint glass a with guy. a local, oh, really local cool, sports yeah. team logo so decorating nice. it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. It's blood all the way down. All the way down. Yeah. yeah. So remove a hunger die. You are now go down from, from two to one. Uh, to one. Both of you. Which is awesome. It is, in fact. All right, so Iron Gullet for Betty. Uh, Tom was able to get a snack. Mm-hmm. Snackula. Mm-hmm. Um, Correct. And then 
do you have? She has a ready supply yeah, on tap. Dad yeah. handles. She's, dad handles that. She has a herd, yeah. as we call it in Vampire. She's got a, a supply <laughs> oh of, uh, of volunteers. She certainly it's quite a word. Look at so it like a herd. <laughs> you don't even have to make a roll. <laughs> okay. It's simply supplied to you because you're in your haven, and so you would yeah. automatically go from two to one. Perfect. Wow! To start the night. That's incredible. It's good I don't to have, have money. that. Uh, the reason I'm mentioning it is because I have a particular thing that. Uh, you know, as maybe part of the mm-hmm. bookkeeping sort of phase, um, I have a prey exclusion. That's correct. Uh, that's in my flaws. So it's the opposite of a merit. It isn't like an awesome thing. It's the thing that's more of a pain in the ass. What is a prey what exclusion? What can you all take? Uh, my prey exclusion. It's like a dietary thing? Basically. Yeah. Um, no. I, I do too, yeah. Process. No. Um, <laughs> it's fine, but uh, bystanders. How does Jameson interpret that? Yeah, how that's he, a, how, in ambiguous in terms. Yeah. Head cannon, how does he work that out? Yeah, for him, I think it's that. I think it's like those who are, um, those who are attracted to, um, th- those who are drawn to, uh, like looky loos, is I think the term, right? Mm-hmm. These are these are. Uh, they're attracted to other things that are going on, mm-hmm. and they're sort of. Uh, I, d- I just like to move up, like like people who are like, like watching the scene of an accident, distractedly. Exactly. Does it have to be something that they're watching that is unpleasant or unhappy? Could it be people who are watching uh, a sporting event or absolutely, a concert absolutely. or it's street any, performance? Any, anyone who anyone whose attention is otherwise, otherwise I think that for engaged. him, it's very important that he not be part of the process. He wants to distance himself. From from the the hunting and the feeding exactly. as much as possible. I, I, it has to be as abstract well, for both parties as is possible. I think in the in the in the busy neighborhood in which you make your haven, it's very possible that there are two or three opportunities per night to uh, hunt for an appropriate vessel who is otherwise engaged. Especially at this time of year, they might be watching a street performer. They might be watching um, something um, like a car show or. Um, Maybe even would would window shopping work? Yeah, it would absolutely work. As, okay. as as long as as long as I thought I could make it, let's as long say, as I thought I could make it function. But let's say that it's let's say that it's this sort of thing where, uh, let's say that this happens like after the last mm-hmm. episode, where it is. You know how it's like when you leave the house in the suit, and then it's like when you come home, it's like not technically it's the same suit, but it is no longer the same suit. Different suit. It hasn't been. Uh, it hasn't been steamed, like it isn't ready to go. Now, even the same clothing, just with that amount of time and use, na- it just looks worse. Yes. Are you eating a suit? Uh, no, no, no. But I'm just saying that, like, when I come back into West Seattle, like into my neighborhood by Easy mm-hmm. Street, um, he looks a lot. A lot worse. A little worse for wear. Yeah. A little lived in. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe. And I, I think that I think that when people are around, he ha- he puts on a pretty solid, mm. uh, jovial sort of like you know convivial nature. But when he is not at the party, he is an, he is a vampire, in the regular way, like in the traditional, in the traditional like the old sense. Nosferatu film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's really, really important that people not see it. Disturbing. Yeah. Okay. Even though he knows they can't see it. Like, they, there's no way they can penetrate this disguise. He just feels seen. We're going to handle your hunting tonight, then, uh, as a role. Yes. And the role is going to be wits and subterfuge. C'est moi. I will give you... A, bluffing is, or, or, the, or you bluffing can, is three. So I feel like it's pretty good. Uh, it is, I think. Uh, dexterity and subterfuge would be the same for you. So either of those, uh, in either yeah. case, it's six dice plus the bonus. Yeah, charming. Mm-hmm. And He's going to go the charm. Two of those dice are hunger dice. Oh, that's right. I've yeah. never had these before. It, it is actually possible. <laughs> <It's a> novelty. <laughs> what a nightmare. Oh yeah, but I believe, like like the it's actually starting to creep in, like the. The this desperation. Is a, this is a very unpleasant feeling, and two isn't that hungry compared to where you could be, so yeah. you know you'd best take care of it before you go meet other vampires. Don't wait. Some men, they wait. They wait to get it checked out. Don't wait. Take care of your hunger when it strikes. Mm. Uh-oh. Uh, wait a second. Don't worry. Oh, oh. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay. 
Yeah, because you only saw the tooth. I just saw the, okay. I just saw the fangs there, the uh, the skull, and I thought, <gasps> no, not a bestial failure on yeah, hunting you, you, wall. Right now, especially given the lead up, <laughs> three successes is yeah. more than sufficient to uh, partake of what you need to sustain yourself from a bystander who's very, very engaged in watching a street performer with a guitar. Oh, like a busker type situation? A busker type situation. People are throwing money in his hat. He's you know, kind of faking his way through an old Tom Waits tune. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, anyone who had stayed and listened to that probably they deserve deserves to yeah. <laughs> lose a couple pints. Take away a hunger die, your, hun- your, di- your hunger goes down from uh, two to one. Dude, I kept it good so long. Mm-hmm. And I feel the desperation. Uh, Tom's also goes down from uh, two to one, right? Or were you? I three? should be at one. Yours yeah. should be at one. Is that a pint? I did. Did you had enjoy it? I think did so. Yeah. I mean, did you? it? Did would Tom have? Would Tom notice like a difference between the pint that he drank at Betty's house and the, the man, man he drank <laughs> in that dirty restroom? It doesn't taste as good. There's something about the freshness and vitality of the blood from a living person, Mm -hmm. it simply tastes better. Fresh bread is better than stale bread. Yeah. This tastes a little flat. Uh, Alfred went to the trouble of warming it up for you, which is awesome. You can only imagine how how, unappealing it might be cold. You know, it grows on you. And the frosted glasses, it can become a refreshing treat. That's right. I'll keep telling myself that. It's a sweet treat. I'll keep telling myself that. that. I will continue to tell Mm -hmm. myself that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Tom's just, um, thanks. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't taste bad. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just the difference it's between... Um, it's not, yeah. I gave you a glass of Pabst. <laughs> <laughs> Still beer. Still beer. Still, Still beer, beer, but any, you know. Any, yeah. beer down the, and any beer in the fridge after the store is closed is good beer. That's right. Right. So I heard a beer joke. Somebody said that IPAs are just pumpkin spice lattes for men. And I didn't get it. It's a basic. That's great. Yeah. What a treat. Wow. I didn't realize so many men were so basic. That's so good to hear. Well, don't be that surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it voice. comes as no shock to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just saying, I heard a beer joke. So. And I thought, hey, my friend likes beer. Hey, I have one hey, friend that likes that beer. Away. That's really good. Have you, uh, have you agreed to meet one another at the destination? Or are you, yes. are you I, going I, to? I think so. Yeah. Okay. We, all yeah. have, we all have our invites. We can all work it out. Okay. Mm-hmm. We don't got a carpool because we all live in different places. You do. You're all coming from different parts of town. So, let's change the scene then. We've, take care, we've taken care of the willpower damage. We've taken care of health. You have elected not to heal. You've still mm-hmm. got the scar faintly visible on mm-hmm. your hand, but visible enough that Odette remarked on it. We've dealt with your hunger. That's all the bookkeeping. Unless anybody wants to make any other special preparations, I'm going to ask you what you've decided to wear for the evening, and we'll cut to the next scene. Oh, yeah, how do you plan to attire yourself for do the Do we need to occasion? find you clothing, or is this what you're comfortable in? I want to respect your choices. Uh, this is what I'm comfortable in. Um, is it? Am I going to get in trouble if I don't have a tie? I don't think you'll get in trouble. Okay. What if we found you, like, a nice satin button down with maybe flames on it or something like that. That seems like it would be very... She's got a good, a good play Something here. with yeah. a pattern, maybe. Yeah. I'd... Yeah, well, I mean, we can take a look. Yeah. I'll yeah. get you something. Okay. I can still wear my Crocs, though. Yes. We, okay. want, you, we want you to be comfortable, yeah. be able to run and things I need like to that. Take off. Yeah. Okay. I saw you on the get up on the ship. Fast. You are very fast. Yeah. So I'm going to say like we, we find... A place in Bellevue. Oh, with like a flame shop. applique type That's thing. That's what I oh, mean. Yeah. 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 Usually it does. <laughs> You're saying, oh yeah, and I'm going, oh no. Well, I want him to For be Tom, himself. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. Harley yeah. Davidson shirt. Harley <laughs> Davidson. It's a bald yeah. eagle on the back, uh, like tearing no. through the shirt. Was yeah. it Ed Hardy? Yeah. Is it yeah. just Ed Hardy? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Like yeah. Betty knows exactly where to find this. Yes. You know where I find everything yeah. shopping wise. It'll be the upscale version of it. It'll be nice. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. What about what about Betty? How do you tie yourself? Betty's going full intimidation on this one. So she wears a like velour jumpsuit. <laughs> it's like long sleeved with like a plunge neck 
Mm-hmm. And she's got like a like a Gucci belt around the waist. Okay. Wow. You know? So and it like flares out at the hips, very old school, a little bit high, like the ankles come up a little bit higher. <laughs> and she wears that with like the snazziest wingtip, like cognac colored wingtip shoes. But this is quite expensive and, and this is couture stuff. Yes. Right? This is this yes. make, what is the statement? The statement is I am powerful and I you can't, I am, you can't screw I am with me. Powerful, I am wealthy. But this dress will also allow me to high kick you in the throat. <laughs> also, I am not with this guy. An important statement. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. she always she always tries to wear practical clothing. She's the type of person that wears like tweed pants and riding boots because we're going on an adventure, you know. Right. So this, this is, is very a, like this is cool. This is a chance for her to shine socially. Yeah, yeah. She wants to look like a businesswoman. So she doesn't wear a dress, you know, but she still wants to look dressed mm-hmm. up. So mm-hmm. she's got mm-hmm. this like lovely. Mm-hmm. You know, it's tailored. When I say velour jumpsuit, I mean like yeah. it's very yeah. tailored. Not from the rack. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. With like a plunge neck. With like, you know, her like a like a her pearls on. Jumpsuit pearls on. gloves. Yes. But her um, gloves only come up to her wrist. They uh, don't go all the way up. They don't go all the way. They just come up to her wrist. And her jewelry. And her jewelry. Tom also has the same plunging neckline. He's Do you unbutton it? He's oh, unbuttoned all the way down. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you absolutely. You have some amazing hair under there. Oh, yeah. It's, all, it's just a massive, you can just see the cross. <laughs> you can just make out Jesus weeping, just his head <laughs> right here. That's crazy. <laughs> He's Jesus, That's the crazy. Lord. The Lord is just the Lord can just out. make out He's Jesus weeping. He's poking up through the middle. <laughs> through like, the fur. As though he's just about to escape. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. Yeah. I love it. That's also a statement. God bless. God bless. Yeah. What about Jameson? Uh, Jameson uh, will arrive in a periwinkle blue Ooh. suit, uh, crisp whites uh, beneath, uh, a carnation, carnation, um, and Swamp. like a black oak, uh, a black oak cane with uh, whose mm. uh, whose handle is like Gosh. a platinum eagle's head. Ooh. That's so cool. Yeah, he's is ready. It, to, he's ready to work. work. Now, is it a real cane, or is it in a cane in the sense that Betty's umbrella is an umbrella? No, this is an actual regular cane. Is it a real eagle? Yes. A real eagle. Or a real cane. That's a steel eagle. Mm. Uh, no, it is, not, it is neither a bird nor a weapon. <laughs> it is merely a tasteful accoutrement. Ah, decorative. Amanda? Uh, Amanda is wearing a uh, fuchsia pattern silk blouse with a uh, very too short skirt. Uh, that's very tight. I would say that it's like her clubbing. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, she's just she's going like, full on. Like, she's very excited to like what she wears to go out. Yeah. She's like going out, out. Uh, it's like, I would say the shirt like has like a shimmer to it. Like it's oh, yeah. very, so A bit of a very, sheen. Yeah, a little the sheen. Mm-hmm. Um, she's wearing uh, fuchsia velvet heels. Um, wow, the soft shoe. Yeah, and she's wearing um, earrings, like Tiffany earrings her dad got her. And um, a very like chunky um, necklace that is just very modern, um, and her hair is up and very like pristine. Mm. It's so she's she's got to do. She's got to do. Yeah, she's put it yeah. up, and she looks like she's going out on a night on the town. Yeah, she's, she's, this is such a stark ready. contrast. I have like my diamond <laughs> flat hair. <laughs> out, you know, like those, yeah. those ones that go around and have like a little mm-hmm. dangly bit. And she's very comfortable like in these heels. Like she's very comfortable in this outfit. It's not like she feels like. Yeah, I love sure. This weird. is this is where she feels she shines. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is, she's being herself. This is her. I don't like it. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah. I think that everybody is going to come here doing whatever their thing is. Yes. This yeah. is going to be. This is going to be cool. Well, let's find out, shall we? Please. Yeah. Last call for preparations. <sighs> let's switch our scene. Yeah. The Tacoma Glass Museum is located on Dock Street. It is, <clears throat> excuse me, right next to um, the Thea Foss Waterway. You're not that far from the port of Tacoma, right. where you had your adventure the previous mm-hmm. night. In fact, in the darkness, as you look out over the tide flats, you could probably, perhaps with your preternatural vision, you could almost see the comet. It's that close. It's not that far away. How old is the Glass Museum? The Glass Museum is built in the last um, couple of decades in Tacoma. Interesting, okay. Yeah, it's relatively new. In fact, it's part of a waterfront and downtown redevelopment and investment in the arts. Both the city government and many private patrons 
have contributed considerable sums of money to revitalize the Tacoma downtown, particularly along this waterway and the adjoining street to make it a uh, center for uh, artistic achievement. There is a history museum, there is an art museum um, featuring paintings and sculpture, there's a children's museum, and many private small art galleries, cafes, and boutiques up and down the length of the, length of the street. Um, whether or not this endeavor is successful in revitalizing the core of downtown Tacoma, it's too early to say. But tonight, at least, the patrons of the Glass Museum aren't the good citizens of Tacoma. Far from it. They are the undead citizens. We prefer kindred. Kindred, excuse me. Um, when you arrive, however you decide to arrive, you find that there is one and only one entrance to the museum that is open. It is a side door, not the front doors. And there is a black velvet rope stretched across it. And two individuals who are built a little bit like you build an Italian sofa. Huge, overstuffed, and lumpy. And they are squeezed into suits that do not really fit them. And they are standing in front of the doorway, allowing no one in until you walk up and they ask you to give your names. Uh, I'll just I'll place my other hand on the cane as well. So they're both resting atop mm -hmm. it. I say, I believe you'll have a, a Jameson Keen on your list, gentlemen. He doesn't even consult a book or a note card or a <clears throat> piece of paper. The Keen party. You are expected. Uh, just right through here. Let me give you the rules. You're about to enter sacred ground. No violence is tolerated of any kind. Amanda brings out her notebook and makes some notes. <laughs> gonna make some notes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. She's got like a little one. No matter what, don't take the punch. Right? Be uh, respectful. I, I looked at Betty and I say, there's punch. Hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. If you run into any problems, Talk to Mr. Kennedy. He's the keeper here. Oh, we want to talk to him anyway. Oh, I want to talk to him. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, Tom Hollandaise. Okay. Am I, am I on your list? Mr. Keene's party is on the list. Are you part of Mr. Keene's party? Well, I didn't know if, he, if we were each individual. We were told to expect a party of four. No, that's four, fine. four of you. Oh, yep. we're a party already. Oh, yep. Mm. Yeah, we're about to bring the party. Sir. We will let you. Well, presumptive to just say keen party, but uh, what? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I had, I had He's kind of our manager. He's kind of our bookkeeper. It's okay. Yes. Yes, I, uh, I have a doctor. Next time we'll put the reservation PR on your agent. Name. Well, it doesn't have to be my name. It could be Amanda's yeah. name. It could be Betty's name. I'm just saying it's a little name. weird. It could be my name. Why couldn't it be? Could. He lifts up the velvet rope, <laughs> opens like, the doors for you, and lets you pass. Music wafts out of the doors and into the night. Strings. Classical music. Vivaldi, you think? <laughs> Marvelous. Yeah, I, this is, I, I am, this is, this is an environment that I'm well suited to. I think uh, so. And I, I enter as though that were the case. The Museum of Glass is uh, an extraordinarily beautiful piece of architecture. It's all um, burnished steel and brushed aluminum and polished tile. <clears throat> And, of course, glass. It is a testimony to the artistry that can be wrought in this amazing medium of really frozen silicone. Uh, and everywhere you look, it is a kaleidoscope of colors. Beautiful, strange tints, only possible when you add the right pigmentation and the right combinations to this frozen silicone medium. There are incredible sculptures everywhere. Fantastical shapes, huge, many yards, excuse me, many yards across, hanging from the ceiling, sprouting from the floor, emerging from the walls. Uh, some of them look like giant fish or uh, giraffes or other kinds of weird creatures. I don't mean to say that they represent these animals, but that's what they remind you of. They're suggestive of it. Um, 
it's breathtaking, really. And the museum itself is uh, almost, uh, almost a garden of these exotic glass animals and plants that you can wander through uh, to your heart's content. For someone whose soul is attuned to artistry, it's an extraordinary experience. Mm. I mean, it's no tattoo. Sure. But, you know. You can carry that right. So awesome. Pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, music, the violins grow louder as you pass through the outer God hallway. Oh, shit. Is that like, is that like blood? Blood M&M? <laughs> yeah. like there's, there's one red M&M left, it looks like. <laughs> so uh, you find yourself, uh, after a few moments, in a vast atrium uh, that uh, reaches up in almost a dome-like structure far, far over your head, and enormous glass sculptures of all different hues and shapes and strange, exotic, twisted combinations are arrayed over the ceiling. Um, now, how they avoid, you know, danger from earthquakes in this part of the world with that much glass? <laughs> Who knows? But it's beautiful nonetheless. For now. At the moment. <laughs> we'll see by the end of the evening. Yeah. Uh, there are perhaps a dozen other individuals in the atrium with you. Uh, you recognize Mr. Drew, once again resplendent in yeah. white. Yeah, hey, good for him. He did same, same suit? Uh, you don't think so. You yeah. think it is probably uh, a different suit. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and Odette, uh, who has uh, exchanged her, her, um, her moto jacket for what must be her dress moto jacket. <laughs> it's a little cleaner and there's a little less flair on it. But it's still a leather jacket. Um, there are about 10 other individuals milling around and talking to one another. Uh, there are um, two people in tailcoats. Mm -hmm. Servants, perhaps. Ooh. And they circulate among the guests with trays. And on each tray, several goblets, and you can smell the fresh human blood all the way from over where you're standing. Jesus. All wow. the way over here. In fact, as soon as you enter the atrium, one of the servants approaches you with a tray. You see now that he is wearing white gloves and a tuxedo coat with long tails like he's in you know, Daddy Warbucks or something. Yeah. And he offers you the tray on which there are arrayed goblets and they are indeed filled with fresh blood. I mean, I'm a social drinker. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, 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 I take snack. one, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. one. I snatch one up. Uh, and I, I bring it over to uh, Betty for a toast, and I say, and to think I ate before I came. <laughs> I know. To our first successful job. Who knew? Chink. Chink. It's warm. It's fresh. It's very, very good. All right. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. So this tastes different than what I drank at Betty's house. Well, yeah. No offense. It is, it is it almost the process. The swill you The fourth time you brought it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keeps coming back to it. Okay. It does taste a lot better. Wow. This is much okay. more refreshing. Maybe so my they... tastes have degraded over the years. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is on tap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, very, yeah, yeah, very exactly. Much so. I, 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 I sort of I click my tongue against the roof of my mouth and I say, 98. <laughs> <laughs> what? Born? <laughs> graduated? <laughs> mm. It has a, um, it has an almost, um, it has an almost insouciant mm -hmm. flavor to yeah, it. It's, a little, uh, it's a little young flighty. and foolish. A little flighty. Mm -hmm. Flighty with the errors <laughs> of a misspent youth. <laughs> you actually like are way into wine, right? I really am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm loving it. I mean, I, I recognize... Uh, That's Mark trademark written. McDonald's, I think. What's that? I don't think you can say I'm loving it. Oh, really? Oh, is that really? Now you definitely are. <laughs> oh, we are in so Shut much trouble now. Please, please. Shut it down! <laughs> Ronald McDonald just bursts in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think he's a vampire. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> no, so, uh, uh, which we recognize Odette, we recognize Drew, but we know that we're also here. Um, we want to meet mm -hmm. uh, Odette's sheriff Boss, patron, yeah. mm -hmm. and we want to meet, or we want uh, Amanda to have an opportunity to meet with Kennedy, Kennedy, although I suspect that meeting will be more private in nature. And even if it weren't private, I suspect the topics will be so esoteric 
that uh, we may not really be able to penetrate them. So As soon as she sees you, Odette peels away from whoever she was talking to and makes a beeline for you. Okay. Yo, yo, and all that commotion! <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Welcome to Elysium! Hey, it's great to see you! It's good to see you too. Okay. Can vampires be drunk? Yeah, we can. I mean, it's harder, but sure. Okay. I mean, <laughs> whatever is in it, when it comes out, it goes into you, right? I mean, there are some licks, you know, Tom, who still enjoy that kind of thing. They like a little whiskey with their with their vitae, and so they'll hunt the bars or whatever. Huh. This, totally. this must be such a this must be such a, a relief for you. Tom. This sounds like a, a real comfort. Yeah. Right. Oh, and next next time next time a person comes around with the white glove treatment. Zone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. Hang out in the alley of a the wing zone. Wild yeah. Wings, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Right so behind a white castle. The <laughs> next time someone comes around uh, with one of these trays, I'm going to make a more pointed request about the contents of a glass just to see what the, what the range, reaction is. You know, what the range you, is available. How do you phrase it? The, like I said, there's only about a dozen other kindred in here and a couple of servants. So your chance is going to come pretty quickly. They, they circulate very rapidly to make sure that nobody goes hungry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah. What's your request? How well, do you phrase it? Well, what do you I, tell them? I say, uh, my associate, uh, my associate mm-hmm. uh, is, is interested. Uh, we're not sure exactly what you have on tap. Uh, he is interested in something with perhaps... Ranch. A, no. A whiskey back. Absolutely, sir. Um, single malt or blended? Yeah. Whatever you have will be fine. We'll take care of it. It's going to take us a few minutes, but just, just uh, be at ease and we'll take care of you, sir. Wow, thanks. After he leaves, I want, uh, Amanda says, isn't there something about virgin blood that's important in some way? You know, I've never found it taste any different, but maybe to some <laughs> people. Who knows? Besides, like, where do you like find them anyway? Yeah. You know, I think it's like a fetish. Like, I don't think it tastes different. I think people just like the idea that oh. nobody has copulated. They're just invested with their in. with their meal. Oh, okay. I think it's like a. I think it's like a sex thing. You never did nothing for me. So. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah, yeah that's what I've heard. I just was like, well, no, and no, there is there are some that say it would allow you to see unicorns. You know, albeit briefly. Right. I tell you what, though. Right, 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 right. I heard about a lick. Who? Oh. Took a hit off a werewolf, and his head went boom, and he couldn't come down for like a week. Wow, what do you mean his head that's went what I heard. His, what I heard. Boom. You mean his head? I mean, I mean, he got so agitated, upset, and angry, he was just vibrating oh. with excitement oh. for like nights. Did something to him. It was super yeah. weird. That's what I heard. You know, I actually took some pink really clubbing would, that did something. You know, I would prefer if you Similar. just stayed off of the drugs. You know, it's a downward <laughs> I mean, I've spiral. tried it. It's just not me. You know? Yeah. Good. Avoid, I'm glad yes. about me. Avoid waterfalls. This is the. <laughs> this don't, is, go, don't go chasing them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be honest. Yeah. You're impressionable. You know. Oh, now yeah. it's just for fun. I can stop anytime I want, and then. It's not. And then before yeah, you know. know it, yeah. I've mm-hmm. had some friends that went down that path. It's the waiter funny. returns after a few minutes and offers you a whiskey glass full of blood. Down mm-hmm. the hatch. Jameson was right. There is a faint but tasty and discernible flavor of whiskey. It actually tastes wow. like booze. Is there a sort of an intoxicating effect to it? Mm. You're not sure. You don't feel anything after having downed the glass, but maybe if you drank enough. Sure. Is that to your liking, sir? This is good shit. Should we keep it coming? Until I fall over or leave. No, I, my favorite drink was cranberry vodka, so if you have something that could give me that kind <laughs> so of So if you have flavor. someone back there <laughs> drinking cran vodka... So if you have someone back there that looks like me... <laughs> It looks, it looks a, exactly like me. The waiter looks a little scandalized <laughs> by your suggestion and says, I'll see what we can do. Do you have anybody back yeah. there eating ice cream? <laughs> Nachos. <laughs> Nachos uh, or something? Odette says, nah, none of that stuff is strong Can I just take enough. a look back there? No, none all right. Stuff is strong the enough. The, the flavor's not, you're wasting your time, Tom. The flavor won't come oh, through. Okay. But, but because the booze is in the bloodstream, right. you can taste it. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like something. a good IPA, you know, myself. 
I made a joke about that. <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't joke, joke about this. So let me tell you. I'll tell you later. Uh, you know, that's funny. actually why I stopped eat, having fresh blood so often. Because every once in a while, you know, you want to take a gander. The edibles in Seattle. <laughs> I don't know what this person was on. I went to yeah, Bumber Shoot. It's the legalization. You know, I couldn't drive home. Yeah. I don't know what that. I don't know what it was. The inconvenience. I don't want to know. Yeah. You know, I didn't ask to be intoxicated in that way. And well, that's why it's a problem. I might just post up outside a Dave Matthews concert <laughs> over at the Gorge. Oh, I, I hear that's good hunting. <laughs> I bet it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, hear, I, hear, I hear werewolves, though, so be careful. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Yeah, just set so, up an RV um, over there. She, she surreptitiously <laughs> points around the room and says, um, the dude with the, uh, the thick head of hair and the big, thick glasses, that's Kennedy over there, you know, in the blue blazer. Wow. And he is talking to um, my buddy Simon, who's a hound like me. I don't see my boss um, anywhere. Um, over there, that uh, really <laughs> uh, beautiful woman with the long, long black hair, that's Evangeline. She's a uh, tutorial or two. She's kind of awesome. Uh, dancer or something, painting, sculpting, she's all over the arts. Um, that scary looking guy over there with the one eye, that's Kendrick. Um, Anna Kendrick? Who? <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know Anna Kendrick, but that's Kendrick over there. Probably really um, Yeah, Kendrick's a Ventru. He, uh, he's kind of badass. He really, really wants to be the prince, you know? Of Tacoma. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, <laughs> Does he snore like that? <laughs> the, the dude. I bet, uh, I bet you missed him. Of Tacoma. Sorry. The dude, uh, the dude in the black turtleneck, that's Connor. He's another venture. He's a buddy of Kendrick's. Is there a prince um, of Spokane? Yeah, yeah, <gasps> totally is. All right. Well, good for him. So, so the deal is, <laughs> the deal is, like a lot of cities, there's a lot of factions. And most cities aren't one thing or the other. Very, very few. I mean, like Chicago is a good example of a city that's totally Camarilla. It's, they got a lockdown there, I okay. hear. I've never been. L.A., though, is a freaking mess. L.A., they got a prince. They got a bunch of anarch barons. Barons, le- mm. barons is what we call the anarch leaders. They got independence. It is a freaking free-for-all I say there. Los Angeles is a mess in the middle of the day. Yeah, imagine what it is at night. I hear weird shit about that city. I bet. Weird shit. Um, I hear they got, like, I don't know, werewolves and ghosts and all kinds of weird, crazy things. I don't want to go. I never want to go. Yeah. Um, it's wonderful up here. Why would any of us want to go? It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful yeah. here. Climate. Yeah. I don't see Sergey anywhere. Like he was here a minute Sergei. ago. Sergey, yeah. Sergey's pretty cool. Um, and uh, oh yeah, the uh, the the blonde lady over there. Uh, she's talking to Kendrick now. Um, that's Valentine. Val. She's uh, she's Malkavian. She sees things. She sees ghosts. She sees the future. She'll tell your future for you if you ask her to. But man, I don't know if you freaking want to know. It, I did it once. I asked her to read my future, and I never want to hear it again. It, it know, is a party. For, since you're young, you mm-hmm. know, Malkavians are very entertaining. Mm-hmm. Dated one once, wouldn't do it again. So you know how, like, you know those girls that say things like, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve <laughs> me at my best? Yeah. That's what a Malkavian is. They're mm. they're very cool. They have some pretty unique abilities, but sometimes, depending, some of them are harmless, but some of them have a screwless a, a, a streak. They, okay, they're disturbed. <laughs> okay, um, Val Val yeah. is pretty cool, but like I say, she sees things. You'll be mm. talking to her, just chatting about whatever, and then suddenly she's off in one of her little visions, and it's mm. all freaking weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, you and know? there's others that you know. Set your bed on fire and mm-hmm. slash your tires and, you know. Uh, um, Sergey, there he comes. Uh, he's Nosferatu. And Dude, I just, I just looked over to see if Sergey was coming in. <laughs> like, yeah. see, I was so convinced. I'm, I was yeah, like, I'm bewitched. Yeah. But, and then you look That's over at Sergey and you like, oh, it's Nosferatu. He's like, ah, ah. <laughs> you look over because you're curious and he's like, yeah. oh, God. Sergey's got a beautiful double-breasted pinstripe suit. He's wearing patent leather shoes with spats. 
He's got a bowler hat on, and he is, he is disturbingly, every, every instrument. disturbingly ugly. He's not bothering to hide his appearance at no, all. not here. It's an Elysium, and Odette explains that he, he, we can be ourselves here. This place is locked tight. This is masquerade safe. You can be who you are. Right? You'll Does see Jameson let the mask down? Never. Hmm. Sergey has got two huge fangs that distend outside of his mouth, and they are tusks that curve the wrong way. It must Whoa. be held feet like, like that. Ingrown fangs? Mm, something like that. He's got one tooth that's sort of poking up out of his he's cheek. Snaggle tooth. He's, um, he's, he's horrific looking, kind of but not supernaturally. <laughs> not supernaturally, so. You wouldn't look at him immediately and think, oh my god, vampire. You'd think, unfortunate orthodontistry. Wretch of a human. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. A, a pitiful creature. His eyes are sunken in his head and his ears are a little too big. They kind of stick up over the brim of his, his bowler hat. But man, he is styling. No, he's, he's making it work. I, I, I absolutely make a note there. Uh, so yeah, we, who you want to yeah, meet? You want to meet, we, you wanna meet the gang? Uh, pick somebody. I'll introduce you. Uh, yeah. Betty being like <laughs> slightly racist is like, oh, Jameson, is he one of your friends? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know each other? Do you know each other? It's that I uh that's that's not how Oh that's not how it works. I didn't know. Maybe you go shopping together. I would. Oh, you right? Uh, judging no, it's from a compliment. this judging from this I would. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I have yet to make uh, his acquaintance, although this is something we will we shall remedy shortly, Beatrice. Mm-hmm. I would like to go see Kennedy as soon as I... I would like for you to go see Kennedy. Now go off okay. and speak to your friends. You are on your way over to see Kennedy. Uh, yeah, just long striding over there, yeah. You bet. Walking right over. Uh, Odette helps herself to another goblet. Man, this is, this, this is the shit. It's so fucking good. I love Elysium. It only happens about once a month, you know. You can Very, always count on a top-up. Very timely. So uh, cool. Mission, certainly. Oh. She helps herself. She's not really all that neat about it. She gets a little on her chin. She wipes off her jacket. Yeah. And, and I say, it's Elysium. Right? Could let my hair down. What happens in Elysium stays. You better hope so. Tacoma. Elysium. Better hope so. Yeah. yeah. Kennedy. Yes. Kennedy is admiring one of the sculptures, something that looks like a giant purple sunflower. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is wearing a blue blazer with uh, brass buttons, mm-hmm. a uh, crisp white button-down shirt, um, polished loafers, no necktie. He's got thick brown hair, just a little gray at the temples, mm-hmm. and some rather, unfortunately, thick glasses. A bit okay. preppy looking, okay. you might say. Okay. Uh, but he immediately turns his attention away from the sculpture and towards you. Uh, uh, professorial. That's a gr- academic, yeah. 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 Okay. You, you suspect that in his, his his private life, he probably wears those corduroy sport coats with the suede patches. On right. Them. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Miss Booker. Hi. Oh, you already know who I am. Of course. Of course. I've been wondering when we might have an introduction. Oh. Well, how have you heard about me? You are heard of me. my clan. Of course. I yes. Know oh. Well. Are. Yes. That's true. I just didn't know. If how, did, how word gets out and such. Uh, nice to meet you. I understand that you are new to our society, so there's a yeah. lot that you don't know. Yes. Mm-hmm. But you've had some excellent instructors, so I'm aware that yeah. your, your inexperience is undoubtedly balanced by uh, remarkable academic achievement. A hundred percent. Yes, 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 yes. I um, am um, well taught, um, as they say. So. And what do you think of our, our Elysium? Oh, it's amazing. This is This is... Um, by Elysium, he means this party. Yeah. That's what you mean. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh, it's incredible. I've never been here before, which is a surprise. This does seem like the type of place my dad would call parties. This is beautiful. Your father. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. My father. And I like. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I have this scar, you see, and I was. I'm actually. Um, I mean, what do you think of this? Isn't that interesting that that happened? <laughs> he uh, pulls his glasses down to get a better look. Apparently, his vision it's, is nearsighted. Yeah. Mm, intriguing. Award a blood sorcery defensive mechanism. What did yeah. you What did you touch that you shouldn't have? Uh, well, I tricked a. Um, I accidentally tripped a trap, 
and I was just kind of um, working. Um, I was looking. Was this uh, an experiment that went awry? Yeah, so, uh, sort of. Um, I was sort of um, trying to dismantle something, mm. and it, it tripped on me, and and this mm. happened, and I thought, oh, that's so strange. You know, I should, uh, <laughs> you know, I should talk to someone that's a Tremere about it because it's just so odd, wouldn't you say? It is odd and unusual. I haven't seen a design like that for a little while. Yeah. One of the advantages of being in our clan is, of course, the excellent instruction. And uh, you'll uh -huh. be taught to make these yourself so that you can protect your, your private belongings and various things that you want to keep other kindred or people or ghouls mm -hmm. or other entities away from. Right, okay. Horses. In fact, rats. I remember a time when he doesn't get to finish his sentence. Because two things, no, three things happen. The first thing that happens is, as your gaze drifts over his shoulder, you see a familiar figure enter the room from the direction of the kitchens. It is your father. <gasps> Mr. Booker, oh. resplendent in one of his best suits. He looks very much at home, like he belongs here. The second thing that happens is there's a loud noise from the entrance and three rough-looking, leather-clad individuals stroll in with a noise that sounds a little bit like a primal shout. One of them is your associate from the previous night, Remy. Remy. The other two you don't recognize. Hmm. Gangrel. Remy. And the third thing that happens is we're going to take a short break. Oh, oh what? Oh, damn these what? goddamn oh. gangrels! <laughs> Welcome back to Seattle by Night, our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle. You're watching episode four, in which our heroes, question mark, vampires, <laughs> our licks, our kindred, our coterie, is in Elysium, the big vampire soiree where it's all going down in the Tacoma Glass Museum. They've been hobnobbing with their friend Odette, enjoying the libations of the evening. Amanda has made the acquaintance of a Mr. Kennedy, who is also a blood sorcerer like herself, mm -hmm. when she spotted someone familiar, her very own father, entering yeah. the atrium. As I would imagine he would continue talking, and I just would... <laughs> like, yeah. come, like, I don't even hear You it. checked like, out on the conversation. I checked out completely, and I'm just watching. So it's a typical conversation between a student and a teacher. <laughs> like my mouth is literally Zone, open and I'm Zoning just like... right out. At the other end of the atrium, closer to where uh, the trio of Tom, Betty, and Jamison are standing talking to Odette, a very loud noise in the form of three Anarchs have sauntered into the Elysium, uh, issuing a primal yell or scream. Ah! <laughs> By way of announcing their presence, you recognize Remy in the lead, and there are two others with him. A young woman with shockingly pink hair that could use a comb, really. You know, some sort of, some sort of attention. And a tall, thin, almost cadaverously thin individual wearing fatigues and old combat boots. He's got a long, dark, scraggly beard that goes almost all the way to his belt. It's a lot of beard. They seem loud and proud to be there. A debt rolls her eyes. Oh, How God. uncouth. Who every comes time, like that? every is it, time. Is it like a juggalo situation? <laughs> oh, oh do, my God. Are they down with the clown? No, do they represent the wicked clown? I mean, is it like a <laughs> great Malenko type thing? Or? It's like, Dude, they're just Hatchet assholes. Oh, they're, they're just, just doing this for a fact. They know they can get away with it. Oh, you're here, here, right? It's right. fine tonight. I mean, you can get tossed out of Elysium, but you got to work at it. Is this the W? Yeah, that's the W. In Wicked, Wicked Clown? Yeah. That I've sucks. never seen that, whoop, man. Whoop, whoop. Wow. What? <laughs> it's a little what? weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I had a period of time where I where investigated I was down with the clown. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to imagine what a juggalo vampire game. would be like. Yeah, I think it works. I think it, I think that's a that's a whole different kind of yeah. uh, influence. Cons and, and consider heard. it in a supplement. I'm gonna think about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Juggalo by night. <laughs> Doing it. So Kennedy <laughs> uh, has finally realized that you're no longer paying attention to him, and he speaks in a sharper tone. Miss Booker, am I boring you? Excuse me, and I just walk, like beeline to my dad. You go? Beeline to your dad. 
you, your father, right? Valentine. Yeah. The uh, the blonde uh, vampire who is said to the be Malkavian. a Malkavian. Yeah. And uh, Kendrick, a very uh, tall, well dressed Ventru, all converge at about the same point in time. Okay. Uh, your father stops dead in, in his tracks. Now, uh, for those of you who see this happening, you don't know who this individual is, but you see the four of them converge, and the one that has just recently entered is a tall, athletic individual. He's in his uh, middle age, but he still looks great. He's got an awesome tan. His hair has the touch of the $100 barber with lots of thick, silvery gray hair. Um, he uh, wears a, a single gold, very expensive chain around his neck with a little cross that hangs from it, and uh, immaculately attired in a beautiful modern cut suit. And he stops dead in his tracks, and the other two vampires look at him. Kendrick says, Mr. Booker, nice to see you. Valentine, on the other hand, has caught wind of something yeah. wrong here. Something yeah. cosmic? He's like, her eyes get big and deeply interested. Mm. Um, I say, what are you doing here? <laughs> oh, it's a party type situation. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just You're like, here with your friends. <laughs> this is a situation where you go there and it's just like, Dad. <laughs> Several oh, different emotions Dad. play across Mr. Booker's face simultaneously. His face does that weird waterfall crashing trick where yeah. one emotion after another <laughs> yes, follows. And it's you just know, <laughs> shock, fear, anger, puzzlement, and then finally his features settle into a very calmly forced and neutral expression. And he holds out his hand to you and says, Miss Booker, so pleasant to see you again. <clears throat> oh, shit. Uh, I, I go, I straighten up and I go, it's nice to meet you too, and I just like force like do like a kind of awkward um, mm. stiff shake. You're shaking your own dad's living hand with yeah. your cold undead hand. Mm -hmm. It's a surreal moment. It is a surreal moment for sure. Uh, Kendrick, I imagine I don't uh, see my dad very often either. Like, you rarely see him, yeah. even though that you even though he lives in in close proximity. Your yeah. your relationship has recently been reduced to him. Um, you know, talking to you through the phone or through texting and yeah. sending you snacks when you need them. Hold on, so this motherfucker is not a vampire? I did, would not have guessed that. He looks like he and belongs here, whoever but he's he is. Here. But he's here. And it's fine. Seems to be. And he's talking with vampires. <sighs> Honorary vampire? Maybe he performed a great service. Uh, <laughs> I guess Maybe I Maybe there's a medal. <laughs> <laughs> so he's with... He's with us. Uh, no, what's his name? Uh, Remy, right? Um, he's no. talking to. No. Uh, no, 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 he's no, talking to uh, Mr. Ball Kendrick, Ball. Okay. the Ventru, and um, Valentine. Valentine loops her arm through Kendrick's and says, "Mr. Kendrick, <laughs> I am so sorry. Bless you. Thank you. Zintai, I've been needing a word with you." She puts her uh, free hand on his arm and leads him away from the conversation. Yeah. Okay. Giving you a knowing nod okay. and a wink as she does so. Okay. Mm. Leaving you alone. Those Malkavians. With your father. Right? Right. We uh, do. I say, hi. Um, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I belong here. This so is, do I. How? You don't, you're not a. It's a long story. <laughs> Uh, well, I want to know. You never told me. Why would you be involved with vampires? For the same reason that you are. Well, I'm trying to help you. Oh man, is he pulling Do they the think that... Look, act natural. Okay. They don't know who you are. They don't know. They don't know. So look, uh, just step over here. Let's admire this glass sculpture. Drink your drink, okay. and just keep your voice low. Okay. Who invited you here? Uh, um, well, this um, woman hmm. invited me. Her name was um, Odette. Oh, the hound. Damn it. Yeah. Should I not be here? What, what's wrong with me being here? It's a I'm allowed. I'm, you know, I, I'm allowed to be amongst <laughs> other vampires. I'm like, this, is, this is my thing, you know, now. Like, maybe it's my life now. I don't know. <laughs> you have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what you're saying. <sighs> Look, I'm trying to help you. 
ever since this happened, maybe a little bit before, I've known. What do you mean this happened when I, I became a vampire? I, I didn't know that they would turn you into a vampire. I don't want to talk oh. about that right oh, now. Oh, shit. I don't want to talk yeah. about that. She says, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Very loudly. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> back at Tom the Tom and Betty are like right, right behind entrance. them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like not even a foot. Not even like, a foot. Just like looking at oh. have you. Have you wandered over to, to see what's going on with Amanda? Oh, uh, dude, don't think dude we... the Tom dad. Don't do it. But the Tom <laughs> dad yeah. combo is too juicy. No, I would say that we're watching like Bette Miller from a distance. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Odette. Curious says, who he is, because we have no idea. For sure. So yeah. we're curious yeah. who our friend is talking to. Yeah. Your friend? She seems upset. Oh, um, his dude, that dude, that's a ghoul. His name's Booker. Uh, He's so, a ghoul? What's yeah, a ghoul? So, so the deal is this, Tom, because clearly you're, you know, you're in school. Yeah. Right? So here's the Teach deal. Teach me. I have so much to learn. If you give your vitae to an ordinary person, just, even just a little bit, uh-huh. uh, it does shit to him. It makes them, it, it gives them some of your power, your vampire power. It's, oh shit, I said it. Did they hear me? Oh, it's funny, you gotta watch that video. <laughs> some kindred power. And as long as you keep feeding that person your blood, they're gonna live forever. So it's like immortality. They, they we kind of get we addicted call them to it too, a little bit. They right? do get addicted to it. Yeah, three huh. hits and three hits, and you're addicted for life, maybe. So, so anyway, he's a. Who does he, he belong to? You, you know, I'm not really clear on that. Um, you know, I'm not really sure. All I know is that it's somebody influential. Anyway, he's allowed at the parties. He's, I see him at Elysium a lot. He started showing up um, maybe, you know, five or six months ago. I see, Odette, listen. I mean, uh, well, I gotta go deal with the, the rabble over here. Here's one, one, one second. If I, I was led to believe that this was something of an exclusive uh, event, and well, everything's now, about any, status. now anybody who has, you know, licked a Vampire can come in. I mean, I feel like the. I feel like it's been diminished somewhat. You know, I, I can't help you there. All I, this is all about. Betty has a reputation. Right? Maybe it's like a service school. Whoever's holding his leash. Maybe like you have to allow certain ghouls in. It's like an emotional support ghoul. Yeah. Whoever's holding his leaf, leash has got enough <laughs> <Yeah>. clout <laughs> that he's okay here, right? If you don't like it or you want something done about it, talk to Kennedy. He's the keeper of Elysium. His job is to enforce the rules here. I'm, I, me, I'm strictly a leg breaker. Fair, uh, fair enough. Well, so whenever, you, gotta break when, whenever you are getting your own leg broken, go handle these children. Hey, I already said thank you and I owe you. <laughs> I just pull out the, the bullet oh, and good. I put it back in my pocket. <laughs> Here, I was afraid you would lose it. All right, <laughs> excuse me for a minute. I'm going to go deal with the chuckleheads that just walked in. God, not Lara. She's just... <clears throat> yeah, she looked like a Lara. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to... Something's going to break tonight. I just hey. know it. Oh, just like last time, you let us know if you need any, need any help. Yeah? Yeah. You know... Uh, one of the perks of being a hound is that we can like sort of deputize other licks. You might come to that, you never know. If there's a fashion component, I'll consider it. Well, I mean, it doesn't come with like a badge or anything. Well, then I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you got weird priorities, man. <laughs> consider me uninterested. You got weird priorities, Jameson. Uh, yeah, well, that's as may be. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to learn more about them later. But Ah, she excuses herself, peels <laughs> off, and goes to <laughs> intercept the three, Remy and his two associates, who are getting really dangerously close to some of the glass sculptures and starting to sort of poke at it. <laughs> yeah, this one's awesome! It looks like a big flower! Whoa! <laughs> nah, it looks like an octopus. You can hear them loud voices yeah, from assessing, trying to determine yeah. the taxonomy yeah. mm -hmm. of this. And so I, um, I, I raise my uh, cane... So up to sort of chest height, and I direct the the beaky end uh, of the platinum eagle sort of toward Amanda and this this interloper here, and I just say hmm hmm hmm, and then I set it down. Familiar? Did you notice her walk across the room straight to him? I, I don't know if it'd be embarrassing her if we just were to like. I did not know. I ever. I lead a rich internal life, but. Um, I believe you. I believe that she did walk over there uh, with immediacy. With purpose. purpose. Well put. Yeah. Hmm. Well, He's a ghoul. 
It's kind of rude of her to not introduce us I to her that. friend, but <laughs> I guess we should mingle, and if she's not embarrassed of us, maybe she'll introduce us. Tom drops exactly. knowledge. Yeah, yeah, science, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the what's the Toreador Evangeline? Evangeline. Oh, she was referred to as Evangeline. Yeah. Is this, is this someone you'd be it's interested kind of nudge, Tom. in? Yeah, like, I mean, I'd be yeah. interested to talk to her. And Do you want to approach her? Hi. Yes, is that a win woman You want me to scenario? greet her? Well, I don't, I don't want to just walk up to her by myself. Oh, uh, yeah, I can help you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is enough of my chest hair showing? I think it's an ample okay. amount. You want to okay. go arm in arm? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Just let's uh, do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I'll just I'll let them happen. I, I'm, yeah. I'm still, I, I think... Uh, I've started to turn my attention over toward uh, Sergey, mm. but I want to watch this happen from a re- from a remove. I want to watch this happen from a remove. If there's any kind of trouble that Odette needs help, because like I don't have a bullet, um, I would love to get one <laughs> in a very <laughs> under, under very <laughs> under very specific conditions. It's like you want a badge. It's sort of yeah. similar. This, this is what I mean. Yeah. But basically, I am choosing to do this in the most Nosferatu way possible, which I'm just gonna. Lurk here Skulk. and see each of the different things, and just sort of yeah. like pass my attention between them. So you're you're essentially assessing the room, figuring out where the power is. Yeah, exactly. Who's, who's got who's got the oomph? The, who's inconsequential? Who matters? Yeah, who doesn't? The, the radar dish is open. The radar dish is open. <laughs> that's oh, right. wait, that's that's telegraph. <laughs> I, I mix my technology it's, uh, apparently. It's sometimes. fine. Oh, we got it. Yeah. Forgive me. <laughs> Arm in arm, you stroll across the tile floor, resplendent in your black velvet couture. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that was the word, velvet, not velour. Vel- is it velvet or is it velour? velour no, it is, is velvet. Is it velvet? What's velour? Which velour velour is like fake velvet. Synthetic velvet. Oh, like the kind that says stuff on the butt, like juicy. Oh, it's not <laughs> I was surprised when no, you said velour. <laughs> okay, I was like, like interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> velvet was the word yeah. I meant. It so can be perfect. velvet if you want it. It definitely doesn't have juicy mind. right yeah. on the butt. I don't so. think you're wearing velvet or velour. But no, I just no. had my American Eagle t-shirt yeah. unbuttoned down to just above my navel. <laughs> oh my well, and and, the, and as oh. I recall, the Lord is yeah, like peeking, peeking up. up through the through the forest. Through the, through the chest hair? Yeah. Yeah. Resplendent. Mm-hmm. Uh, Evangeline sees you coming and um, breaks off her own contemplation of a completely different sculpture, a very, a very delicate climbing vine sort of thing. Uh, she too is holding a goblet, but she has, it doesn't look like she's had any of the blood yet, must be getting cold by now. She's very beautiful. Uh, she has um, sort of uh, um, very high cheekbones. She, is, she has model good look. She could have been a fashion model. Maybe she was in life. She has very long, very straight dark hair. There's a, there's a hint of, uh, of, of uh, maybe um, American Asian ancestry uh, about her face. She's wearing uh, a very beautiful white satin ball gown that is maybe a couple of decades out of date, but is nonetheless stunning. It was probably state-of-the-art couture when she bought it to wear it. Um, she looks unsurprised to see you but she's clearly waiting for you to introduce yourself. Yeah. I would op- I'd probably open it up. Mm-hmm, sure. Open up the conversation yeah. and be like, Evangeline, I presume? That's absolutely right. And you are... Beatrice Lancaster. Miss Lancaster. Yes. I prefer Betty, though, if you don't mind. Betty. Oh, you can call, you can call me Evangeline or Evie. Oh, if Evie. You like. That's nice. Evie, I wanted to introduce you to my wonderful friend... Tom. Tom Hollandaise. Tom Hollandaise. Tom. She shakes your hand. She doesn't seem to be put off by your rather outre attire. Okay. Uh, the handshake is cold. She's clearly dead, sure. just like you are. Uh, so I look at the sculpture of the climbing mm-hmm. vine. And I say, uh, reminds me of New Life or Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> Jack and the Beanstalk. It is uh, got something of the fairy tale about it, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, it's a chihuly. A lot of these sculptures are Chihuly. Do you know his work? God bless you. <laughs> Dale Chihuly, the artist. <laughs> oh, no, I'm quite familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, new in town? I am. Yeah, I just got here. Uh, Betty's been nice enough to put me up in her pad over in uh, Bellevue. Bellevue, very exclusive district. Oh, Pretty swanky well. digs. It's a nice little, it's a, it's a little spot. It's it's cozy. I don't remember seeing either of you in Elysium. It's bigger than my school. Bigger than your school? Yeah. 
You own a school? No, like the school I went to school in. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, art school, maybe. No. 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 Just naturally taught. So I just had a passion for it and a real natural gift. For what? Art. Really? Yeah, tattoos. Really, Messi? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Tom would just... Oh, he would on. unbutton yeah. all the way down. <laughs> just take this shirt off. Evangeline turn around. doesn't seem to mind at all. She's On the contrary, she seems yeah. fascinated. She makes a very close examination of the ink, of the drawings, of the colors, and the shapes. It, it, did you tattoo yourself? Is oh. this possible? This is beautiful. Some work. of it is me learning. Some of it is people that I admire. Fantastic. Which one is the most recent one before? Oh, before. Mm -hmm. The skull on my neck here. Oh, yeah. So he re reaches up a well-manicured finger and very lightly, just with the tip of it, traces the shape of the skull against your skin. It's, it's exquisite. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> Start Put your back shirt back on. <laughs> Put your shirt back on. Okay. I, I just wanted to introduce you to, I thought it might be helpful for Tom to get to know some of his fellow oh, it's Toreador. So difficult to make the transition into our society if you don't know anybody. That was very thoughtful of you. I so are there any like Betty. Toreador meetups I should be going to? You mm -hmm. guys have a website? There, um, no, we don't. We, we don't generally use a lot of internet. It's okay. not safe. Has no one sense. told you? No, I don't have a lot of info. Oh, well, it, I would consider it a privilege to introduce you to some of our associates. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Just one second. I just have to be here. I just have to be present. Listen, I would love it. He's just still using Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> yeah. He's never stopped. No, why would he? He just never stopped. He's, he's been again. taking pictures this whole time. Like there was a cool <laughs> puddle at the docks and he got like a reflection of the moon with like the boat and everything. He's like down. Yeah, I'm sure that went right up on your right gram. On gram. Right on the gram. Right on the gram. At the docks. Still tweeting. Trying away. to find somebody. Yeah, you, you add a location to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's called geotag. Yeah. Um, uh, she, so should I not be doing that? You know? Oh. There was <gasps> actually a, a few raids. Raids? Some time back. Oh. We'll talk to Jameson about it. The Nosferatu are very knowledgeable about cybersecurity and things mm. like that. Look, it's not their fault they look the way they do. They can't help it. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to look straight at them, but they do know their stuff. Yeah, the, the beast that we've been hanging around with is terrifying, vile to look upon. Is that Mr. Keene? I've heard about Mr. Keene. But he's I, I understand okay that he's very competent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's well, smart for a monster. Very well said. Very well <laughs> very said, Tom. Well. Yeah. I think we're going to get along splendidly. I think so, too. This has been fantastic. <laughs> Meanwhile... What's Betty's expression during all of this? I want to know. Betty <laughs> realized Tom was kind of a mean girl. <laughs> <laughs> so Betty's just very like, it, like now she thinks he maybe talks shit about her behind her it was back too. Too real, basically. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, didn't I haven't seen the side. What could possibly? You're go very on? well put together. I mean, I'm not gonna say. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Wow, left, uh, it's kind of a backhanded compliment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well put together. Get you in a couple, in a pair of Crocs. Yeah, you're not yeah. gross. So you have I seen think it's the compliment. Whatever went down over there has yeah. gone down, and you have you have seen uh, you've seen Miss Evangeline make a minute examination of shirtless Tom and uh, play around in his chest hair. You're not really sure what that yeah. was all about. All right. Yeah, it's like, but when, seems... when, I, when I see the shirt like sort of get peeled <laughs> like a banana, <laughs> I just see. You can't this. hear anything. You just see him start taking his shirt off. <laughs> but, but but we just have to see it like from like from like over my shoulder like. like Hmm. Hmm. Uh, and it, it, I would say, I mean, it, it seems like it's not going. Uh, it seems like it's not going badly. <laughs> seems you know? to be going okay. Well, interfere. Historically, right. that's been a great indicator. Um, <laughs> Sergey has yeah, was just begun to move in your direction in his beautiful button down, uh, yeah, two two double breasted button down, and his bowler hat. Uh, actually, and, and I'll and I'll as soon as I note that this. Uh, because again, you're saying that like we're in this atrium, but there's like twelve or to fourteen of us total, and so it's 
It's a big empty space. There's a lot of indications, right? I mean, we know if somebody's coming your way. Oh yeah, Ooh. it's hard to hide. It's coming this way. Ooh, no, so I'm gonna, I, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk. As soon as I notice that that mm-hmm. vector is occluding, I, just, I immediately start walking back in that direction, and I say, uh, Sergey, is it? Uh, let me save you some time. I mean, you'd have had to walk all the way over there, uh, Mister Keen. Indeed, it is I. My, pleasure to make your acquaintance. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I also feel pleasure, but I don't know why yet. So. Tell me about yourself, and I'll decide which of the things about you is the best. Mm. What a gentleman. How refreshing. <laughs> How refreshing indeed. He waves a clawed hand at the rest of the, uh, of the, th- the not throng. Yes, the throng exactly. that is not a throng. Yeah, yeah, the unthrong. Yeah. Ah, it's wonderful to be able to count on our blood to show sensibility. Oh, and I mean, let it be, let it be known. Uh, need it even be said, we look like a million goddamn dollars, my friend. <laughs> Don't we just? A million goddamn dollars. You I know, love every part of it. You notice there are certain sounds he has to pronounce very carefully because of the tone. Oh, ab- <laughs> oh, I know what's up. I mean, I, it's absolutely, like, precisely, I get it. If anybody gets it, I get it. Mm. I gotta make these, ma- I gotta maintain this shit all the time. He, uh, points a claw in the direction of Amanda and the well-suited gentleman she's talking to. Do you know him? I, I don't. I know her. Ah. She is a savant of some kind, sir. She is equally adept at veterinary medicine. <laughs> uh, An unusual skill yeah, for a kindred. Indeed, French classics. Uh, it is a, uh, she is a startling menu of capacities. Mm. Renaissance woman. What is her blood, do you know? Uh, Tremere is my understanding. Ah. Uh, there's, there's a lot that I don't know um, about the details. I understand she was here to speak to uh, Mr. Kennedy about an experience that mm. she'd recently had. For uh, a Tremere, not bad. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> I'll, I say, I'll take it. That is the greatest accommodation I can afford. (laughs) And I say, now, this creature she is speaking to here, who is is this? Uh, A a ghoul, I uh, understand. uh, It pains the heart, (laughs) Mr. Jameson. It pains the heart. Well, no, does it pain the heart because this exclusivity has been perforated by this creature? Time was when, time was when an unaccompanied servant would not be allowed. (laughs) <laughs> in our I said, I said, well, what changed? What changed? Uh, Mr. Kendrick seeks to curry favor with certain influential kindred. I see. He, so, and, and these, the influence of these kindred exists somewhat beyond Tacoma, I would say? Either that or, this is my working theory, mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. has incurred a debt and this is the repayment. Oh, really? Mm, it is my hobby to find out. I have made it my hobby. I will know the answer. I suspect. I love this man. No, yeah, I, I suspect. In fact, um, I lean my cane mm. uh, closer to him. I say, in fact, I know. I think that we can be quite useful to one another, sir. Shall we form our own conspiracy? <laughs> let us. F- <laughs> oh, sir, my heart. let us form our own clan. I can think of no finer use of time. Exquisite. We shall, we shall divine the secret. Now, I understand uh, that, un, you know, under circumstances like this, contact information is often exchanged. Mm, yes, of course it is. Uh, uh, I do not use um, the modern convenience. Who would? But. Except me. But, I do that sometimes. Uh, I can, of course, give you information where I may be contacted reliably through intermediaries. Satisfactory. Excellent. We shall exchange that information and together we shall delve, sir. Delve <laughs> deeply, as deep as we must. Oh, yeah. Greedily, perhaps. Oh, perhaps even voraciously. <laughs> now, see, you must understand my knowledge of our society, our society, uh. is not especially robust. You'll note that I have maintained the glamour here even though it is not a necessity. Been busy, have you? I'll drop it. 
<sighs> and I say, we know each other, sir. Now, there is much of our society that I should learn to be a success. You have to understand, I have found my success outside of the society, as it were. Extraordinary. Uh, and I think that to gain the last bit of success I need for a, a project I've been working on for some time, I think that I may need to avail myself of our society. I dare say this is no chance meeting, Mr. Poole. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker, I cannot get enough of him. He has to be protected. <laughs> no, you have. Protect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. You say that now. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the corner. Yes. Look, sweetheart. No, no, no! Don't call me sweetheart. And this, at this point, I'm talking so loud that others definitely can hear me. I oh, say, no. uh, it's, it's over over place. You, you don't get to control you every part of my her. life. <laughs> you, you. We heard that. Her. We heard that for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Evangeline heard yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Evangeline stops and looks over in their direction. Do you? That's one of your associates. I saw you come in with her. Uh, oh yeah, that's Amanda. Amanda. She's a friend of ours. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, she's being a little loud. Is she okay? Yeah, you know what? She is. Right. She's I'm really more of a friend of Jameson's. Yeah, I'm gonna leave you two to talk. <laughs> you two, Toreador. <laughs> and I'm gonna go see if she needs help. Okay. You know. Are you sure? If you need to go help your friend, it's perfectly okay. No, it's. She's it's, in the keen we'll, party. We'll meet again. I'll, I'll make sure we do. And I'm still like side eyeing the shit out of Tom. Because he is a different person around a man's <laughs> You don't say. Mm -hmm. I'm just like side-eyeing. And like walking and side-eyeing. And walking. Mm -hmm. Walking, we're walking. And we're fast walking. Fast walking, walking and talking. Then he turns back to Evangeline. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway. Anyway. But you are heading yeah. in that direction. Yeah. Right? Like patent leather shoes, clip clapping. Clip clapping across the polished tile. Mm -hmm. The power walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just as he's, he's urging you to keep your voice down, right. Betty joins you. I say, I will not keep my voice down. You, <laughs> you, Amanda, you didn't introduce me to your very handsome friend. He seems very pleased by this compliment and grateful for the interruption. Oh, I can't even imagine. I'm try, that's what I'm trying to do, this is what I do. Uh, he, takes, <laughs> mm -hmm. he takes a breath and it is that point you realize that yeah, he is alive. He's, alive. he's breathing, his skin has you know, the sheen of life, he blinks. Um, he licks his lips when they're dry. Uh, he's alive, for sure. I'm Mr. Booker. Mr. Booker, so wonderful to meet you. I'm Amanda's friend, Betty. And I, ha I like give him my hand, but it's like definitely uh, he Palm takes down. your warm hand, your cold hand in his warm one, mm -hmm. and uh, he thinks about it for a moment and then kisses you, mm -hmm. kisses your fingers. Yeah, yeah, he's a gentleman, I figured. He is, although he's not sure what's going on here. Yeah. Amanda, you didn't tell us you had an acquaintance here. Is everything okay? Yeah, I, yeah, everything's, I mean, <clears throat> no, not everything's okay, but, um, <laughs> you know, um, Mr. Booker here is, um... This man isn't bothering you, is he? I look over at my dad. And His see. attitude towards Betty is not what you've come to expect from your father. He's not speaking. He's watching her as if for permission to speak or maybe a cue. Oh, almost and like he looks um, almost, submissive? He looks almost servile in her presence. Oof. Weird. You are not accustomed to seeing your father. No, I've never seen in, my father like he that. He is the chairman of the board, the uh, you know the the corporate raider, the investment banker, the entrepreneur, the shark. Uh, you've only seen him in attitudes of accomplishment and confidence, and this is not the this That's is like not so the gross. father you know yeah. at all. He clearly feels. Whether he's pretending or not is uncertain, but he's giving the appearance that he is deferring to Betty, right. waiting for permission. Okay. Weird. Um, yeah. And I'm guessing Betty probably 
ha- like knows that she has that power over the school. Yeah, which is right. why I came to help you. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, you sounded like you were in distress a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, that makes sense. You were kind um, of embarrassing us. No big deal, but I just wanted to, you know, everybody was looking. You are causing <laughs> oh. a little bit of a scene. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that me and Mr. Booker just have a lot. We have a lot to talk about. We just have a lot of, you know, we just have a little bit of history, I would say. Oh, you don't say. Yeah, uh, before. Not bad history, I hope. Uh, no, I wouldn't say so, would you? No, no. No, not at all. Um, very happy memories. Oh. Very happy. I just, like, right in the face, just like, mm-hmm. How are you finding the Elysium, oh. Miss, um, it, it was Miss Betty? I prefer not to use my last name openly. I'm Beatrice Lancaster, but you can just call me Betty. I mean, we're all friends here. As you say. Mm. The building is beautiful, isn't it? It's just a lovely building. It is, it is re- very pretty, yeah. I've never been here before. He thinks for a moment as if trying to decide if he's going to say what he says next. I agree. I uh, donated a considerable sum to one of the wings. Oh. I feel it's important to support the arts. I, I would agree. Um, don't know much about them, if I'm being honest, but I've always found the idea to be quite novel. <laughs> I know what I like. <laughs> uh, I say, uh, yes, de- Mr. Booker, uh, he, he, I would say you donate quite a bit to many different societies and, and different museums. And I do. It's, it's true. You know me well. I do. His attitude speaking to Amanda is different than his attitude speaking to yours. There's, you're well accustomed to ghouls who defer to the kindred. In fact, that's the normal status quo. They are, they are not equal in kindred society. So his attitude towards you is not very surprising. Mm-hmm. But he unbends a little bit when he's talking to Amanda. Do you want to make a roll to see if you can read say, the subtext? I was going to say, can I pick up, like, is there a resemblance well, in the face? Or it's easier, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's make this, so the traditional role, without, without benefit of any supernatural power, the traditional role is wits and insight. You can, of course, risk hunger to improve your chances. Mm-hmm. Um, your role is really good, though. You are a fast thinker. And... You know, without any without any benefit of hunger, that's still six dice. Yeah. So your your odds are pretty good. Now, um, there's a lot of information to be learned here, and so the number of successes indicates how much you get. Okay. All right. With certainty. You want to, you're trying to determine dad energy. Yeah. Big dad energy. Big dad energy. <laughs> <laughs> how do we do? Uh, two successes. successes. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Not a failure. So, uh, the first thing you notice is that your suspicion is confirmed. He doesn't feel he doesn't feel that he is her inferior. He's trying to be polite, but the subtext is that he feels that he is her superior, but he's trying to hide it. In this context, okay. The second thing you pick up on, just from his body language, how he holds his shoulders, the tilt of his head, how he moves his hands, um, he is very nervous. And it's not the ordinary nervousness of a ghoul among the predators. Uh, um, he's, he's nervous of this situation, of you and her and him in this corner right now. Uh, with two successes, that's all I can tell you at this time. Okay. Now, you can, of course, um, spend a willpower point. This might be a great time to uh, give yourself some I'm, superficial willpower damage or re-roll those failures. Yeah, I'm no, always happy to spend true. someone else's willpower. Yeah, yeah. burn it. It's like Total spending someone else's yeah. cash. Yeah. So, so you, I believe oh, you, this, had, yeah. um, you had four failures. So there okay. will be four ordinary, uh, up to I three only, ordinary yeah, dice. Yeah, only three. Yeah, so you may re-roll those. Come on. Oh, oh one more. One, one more success. Um, they have the same eyes. Mm, I feel like... Same color, okay. same shape. There's an unmistakable resemblance. His last name is Booker. Her last name is Booker. Mm. So it very rapidly yeah. went it from uncle related. to mm-hmm. like... But I'm thinking there's a relation here. Yeah, they, they, they may well be related. Mm-hmm. That's a big coincidence. If they're not, that's a pretty huge coincidence. Yeah. And I'm going to comment on that. Like, because I was just meeting his gaze. I'm going to say, you have such striking eyes. 
And just like have my eyes very passive aggressively flip Weird. between the two of them. The Gross. color drains yeah. out of his face. He goes pale. And he looks at Amanda. He shrugs minutely, shakes his head just ever so slightly and said, Amanda is my daughter. Hmm. Composure. I look like very briefly, like my eyes fly open because I was expecting like an uncle. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, kind of flutter back. Oh, Amanda, you didn't, well, mm. introduce this to your father. This I didn't is... expect him to be here. Amanda was not honest. aware that I would also be in attendance. Interesting. Um, my employer among kindred is not here. And I'm not at liberty to discuss my employer. Your Unfortunately, employer. I apologize for Ooh. that, Miss Betty. We might have to talk later, Amanda. Yeah. He is. He is struggling for composure at this point. He's clearly. I've just age. realized she doesn't know. But I'm not going to drag him in front of his daughter because I'm not cruel. Not in that way. Not. <laughs> not, not tonight. I say, uh, uh, Daddy, we should talk. I agree. Um, you're going to have to forgive me for a few minutes. I have something that I need to do here, and then I'll be free again. Okay. Please excuse me, Miss Betty. Mm -hmm. Amanda. He's dropped the Miss Booker pretense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he uh, leaves your conversational pit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarlacc pit. He's just like wiping sweat yeah. off. And it's cool until he until he turns away, and then it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. And he makes his way Pale. over to uh, Mr. Kendrick, the well-attired venture that was pointed out to you earlier, and uh, engages in um, a quiet but um, intense conversation. Well, this is by far the most fortuitous evening. The auspicious. <laughs> cannot but concur with you. I do not know what has transpired over there, but I, I... I care not. This is the locus of power. May I, may I be so bold as to extend an invitation? I, I make a play, like, like startled by this cheek. I say, absolutely. Uh, excellent, excellent. Um, we have exchanged the means of communication my people will be in touch, as they say, with your people. Aha! Uh -huh. um, uh, I mean, I extend a hand. Uh, he extends a clawed uh, appendage. It's on the end of his arm. It's probably a hand. It's, it, you know what? <laughs> it's going to do. It's going to work. It's gonna I'm going to shake it. Yeah, I'm sure. Whatever, whatever he puts out there, I'm fucking shaking it's it. It's a little scaly, but yeah. Hey, okay. it's fine. Uh, <clears throat> mega shakes. Uh, and then I say, I, uh, uh, I await uh, with bated breath. I look forward with great anticipation to our rendezvous. If you will be so kind, I pray to excuse me. Absolutely. I have another matter of business. I nod, to. and then I pay very, very close attention to where he to goes. To where he goes. Uh, he makes a calm and unhurried walk to Valentine. Damn it. The Malkavian. That's where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a... I can't go over there now. I can't be like the double douchebag. You already goodbye. said goodbye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. Oh. Evangeline is a fun conversationalist. She knows everybody here. Mm -hmm. She seems very free with her information. So whenever you ask her questions, the answers are forthcoming. Um, she's a bit reserved, but polite and fun. And she knows all Tom's just about, having a great time. All about this art. Finally, right? Yeah, yeah. She does let you know that the Toreador uh, do sometimes have um, informal meetings, mm -hmm. um, kind of like um, art discussions. We like to get together and talk about books we've read and what we're painting or um, who's dancing uh, on the stage and uh, theater that's in town and um, mm. sort, of a, sort of an informal club. You'd be welcome to join. Can I ask you a question? Of course you can. When you're not here sipping free beers, how do you get your blood? Hmm. Well, that's a very personal question, Tom. Um, I understand that 
there's a lot you don't know, so I'm not going to take any offense. But I am going to encourage you not to be so bold about that kind of question mm. with just about any other kindred that you meet. They might get offended. So it's not just like asking you about your favorite restaurant? It's really not, but do you know why? No. It's because, um, you know, if you know how a kindred likes to get their meals, you could interfere with that process. You might use it against them. Mm. It happens. We're not nice, Tom. We never have been. Hmm. Don't let all this fool you. I'm not nice either. That's a lot for Tom to take in. Mm. Yeah, because he just, he finally made that fucking <laughs> yeah. connection. <laughs> yeah. God. And then it turned so fast. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I'm going to answer your question. Uh, I like to eat in my own community. Uh, I patronize a lot of artists. You know, sort of a, sort of a, um, uh, an investor in artists. Not in mm. art, but in artists. So many artists just can't make ends meet these days. You know, so our society doesn't value art the way it should. Mm -hmm. Not like it values other things. There are a lot of artists, particularly young ones, who need help. They need... Getting rid of blood. Well, that is the compensation that yeah. I take. Mm -hmm. oh, man. That's fair. It's patronage. That's yeah, nice. it's patronage. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, think about it. If you, if you get out of school and you want to make your living as an artist, it's really hard. Oh, yeah. Sure. A lot of them just, they barely scrape by. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm thinking about investing my teeth into some young necks. She's doing her best <laughs> to seem amused. That's just something I've been thinking about. You're thirsty. You're not getting enough um, enjoyment from the refreshments? Well, no, this stuff is good, but, you know... I'm, I had, you know, I had one, I had a bad experience in a bathroom, and, uh... Really? As we all do. Yeah, <laughs> just like, that you could know. be anything. <laughs> and so I'm kind of, I've been kind of curious about how other people get their blood. I noticed you talking to Odette the Hound earlier, she said, changing the subject. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You she know her? She cool. Uh, I mean, I have a bullet from her, so she owes me a favor. This means she owes you a favor? Yeah. That's no small thing. Oh, inch, inch and a half. She works for the sheriff, you know. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, she's, uh, she's his leg breaker. She's a leg breaker? Leg breaker. Oh, a leg breaker. She's oh, an enforcer. That's an enforcer. The sheriff enforces law and order in our society. So when you break the rules, the sheriff or one of his hounds will come to call on you. Have you ever broken the rules? Of course. Pretty easy to do? Sure. You can do it accidentally? You can do it without even knowing you've broken a rule. Cool. It's a cool place. <laughs> you know, it has, it has its compensations. Yeah. You're free to make art for the rest of eternity. Well, my art doesn't work so well on corpses is the problem. Well, I agree that that is a detriment, but you know, I have heard, it's a rumor, it's just a rumor, that the Tremere clan knows how to fix that problem. I've heard, really? I've heard that there is blood, sorcery, blood magic that can make tattoos permanent on us. What? I would give anything to know the answer, to, the, to know if that's true. And if it is, wouldn't it be marvelous? I've always wanted a tattoo, but I never got around to getting one before. You know what? I'm going to figure this out. You've just given me something to do. Oh, I'm very pleased to hear it, Tom. It's a terrible thing to be bored. I haven't been at this all that long myself, but some nights, you know, it gets lonely. It does. Yeah, I Meanwhile, where has Betty gone? Yeah. I'm still with Amanda. Are you still with Amanda? Yeah, yeah. I think we're still standing. It, and I'm just like seething, so I'm just standing there like red in the face. Just like hot. Are hot. you okay? Yeah, just... um. I just didn't know my dad had anything to do with vampires. I just thought I had, didn't expect him to be here. And I didn't expect him to know or be involved in me becoming a vampire. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. you know. I'm going to like usher her to like a small place where we can sit. Is there like seats anywhere? There are. Like there, are there are plenty of lounge chairs and comfortable leather benches, mm -hmm. and many yeah. of them are out of earshot of most of the oh, other kindred. Perfect. Perfect. So I'm gonna find like a little leather bench, and I'm gonna 
grab a goblet from a passing tray and hand it to her and ask yeah, her to yeah. sit down. Get that drink. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Take, a, take, take a nice deep sip. Yeah, I yeah. take a, a long delicious, drink. delicious, refreshing liquid. And as she's like sitting, I'm going to sit next to her, legs crossed, hands on my knees, and be like, as I understand it, young kids these days have like their girlfriends. I'm going to try to be that for you. <laughs> But it's very okay. difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I'm going to do my best. Yeah, okay. Okay. This is going to be really hard to hear, but I really feel like you should know. Mm. Your father doesn't... Well, he does work for a kindred, but there is this process in which some kindred feed their blood to living humans and those living humans then become bound to do the will of the kindred. Now there's a slightly unpalatable word for this. <laughs> okay. But, and the person in question turns into what is honestly a crude vernacular, a ghoul. But not in a bad way. And Amanda, and please drink that, drink that, drink that. Yeah, your your bottoms up, tip it up. Father, I do this, like just touch it to my lip and put it down. Your father is a ghoul. <laughs> He's a ghoul. My dad is a ghoul. Why? Why would someone do this? Like, why would someone drink this blood? Like, what? What? What do they get? What does my dad get? Their out of this? body becomes fortified with like a like a lesser version of kindred powers. Often you get, first of all, apparently Dad. it's like delicious and you get addicted after three mm. tastes. Vitamins and minerals. You live forever. Come on, look at that man's physique. I'm not trying to be weird. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. Dude, and I bet your dad can That's go all night. That's not normal. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's because he's hopped up on kindred vitae. On goose juice. <laughs> he doesn't just look like that. He's always looked like that. But you don't think he's preserved remarkably well for his age? Amanda, I don't want to weird you out, but your father is an incredibly attractive man. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, not, I know it's unrelated, be- but it's like a natural preservative, <laughs> you know? Right. So there's many reasons why he may have chosen this life. But sure. really, the details of that, I mean, he's in business, right? It could have merely been a business deal. So really, this is something that you I have really to ask him. But why. I feel like you should know. Right. Yes. I appreciate you telling me that. Because I'm like to tell me that. your girlfriend in the unlife. Yeah, I would say normally a girlfriend, girlfriend wouldn't tell me how hot my dad was. Just like future reference. <laughs> Tom, Tom finally just walks over he's and he's like, be good at it. that guy you were talking to, he fucks. <laughs> I... My, it's her dad. It's my oh! Dad. So if you could not talk about my dad <laughs> fucking, that would be great. Shit. Yeah. I hit on him, so I mean, I, did, I was about to hit on him. <laughs> um, Here. You hear the few clicks of like the, the, the steel base of the cane? I am not sure if you have seen this gentleman. <laughs> there is a statue. <laughs> That's Come my dad. To life. Come to life. That's my dad. Understood. And I'll just turn around and I'll just find <laughs> <laughs> Interesting interjection. <laughs> Come to life. <laughs> when you God, turn around, fucks. you notice uh, that um, Mr. Sergey is nowhere to be seen. He has left the atrium. Uh, Valentine now stands uh, by herself, alone. Um, <laughs> she, like you, is holding a goblet and looking around the room, moving her gaze from person to person, or I should say kindred to kindred, group to group. Her stare is a little unfocused. Hmm. As though she may be seeing yeah. that which is not easily yeah, yeah, seen. Yeah, I was just, I know exactly what it is. And, and the truth is that Sergei, much like myself, could absolutely be here, even now. I mean, could be. Uh, so uh, Jameson will give himself over very briefly to the idea that there could be many more attendees of this event hmm. that are not seen. The three, uh, the three anarch interlopers, Remy and his uh, two compatriots, have finished their disagreement with Odette, and they are rather sulkily oh, man. occupying a bench 
near one of the larger and more outre sculptures. It looks like some sort of bizarre Lovecraftian octopoid creature. Wow. Uh, and it's just absolutely enormous, like the size of an elephant. Um, they don't have goblets. They're just sort of sitting there, unhappy, That's almost fine. pouting. They can be teens. Well, yeah, well, yeah, they just got tooled by, yeah, really? oh, dead, I get it. Um, I'm going I'm to walk over and see if I can absorb any of this uh, data from <laughs> Valentine. Mm-hmm. Uh, she just spoke to like the person here that got me. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe this is a good through line for me. Valentine's unfocused gaze focuses again as you approach. Um, she is wearing yeah. a black sequined uh, ball gown that might have been um, might have been uh, the hit of the ball in maybe the 1930s. Yeah. Uh, she's wearing elbow length. Ooh, satin ooh, ooh. opera gloves. Mm-hmm. Her hair is like butter blonde and uh, short, chin length. A little flapper length. Oh, I was just going to say, just just like the the absolute image of the period. Right. She extends her own gloved hand to you. Oh, well, I I, I know this ritual, but mm-hmm. of course, of course, of course I've, I've put back on my, you know, not gross thing. Um, <clears throat> I, I I mean, this is a ritual I know perfectly well how to iterate. Uh, and I say, uh, good evening, Valentine, is it? That's right. Now, I understand that at these events, this is, of course, my first, but I understand, I'm given to believe, I have been told that you perform a novel trick huh. hmm. at these events. That's an interesting and polite way to put it. Well, it wasn't put that way to me. Uh, it was suggested that people did not necessarily like that trick, but I'm the sort of person who likes that kind of trick. The emperor never likes to be told that he has no clothes, and yet he parades around without them. Oh, and they love to ask for it, don't they? And they, they want it so bad until they get it, but I actually want it. I'm between two lives now. I need guidance for the next half. Are you sure, Mr. Keene? And yes, I do know who you are. I say, I'm a boy who takes his medicine. Boldly stated. I should be happy to oblige you. I can't wait. You will then owe me reciprocity. I'm about to come into quite a lot of money, so... Mm. I find that as time goes by, (laughs) financial gains are all well and good, but I would prefer... I would prefer a more personal service, something a little bit something more... Something sartorial. Hmm, perhaps some, something a little bit more actionable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I, I do live over a record store, hmm. uh, so if you're looking for vinyl, uh, I can probably make that happen. <laughs> well, I do probably. enjoy cutting a rug now and then. Well, uh, no, I, I, I think, oh, I no. think we, may, we may continue with our business. Interesting. Interesting. Very well. Uh, I shall oblige you, Mr. Keene. It's, uh, I'll, I'll stand alongside her and look out, uh, just sort of like see, see this party from her perspective as well. She's watching the kindred circulate, the little conversational knots tie and untie and swirl around. It's not unlike watching you know, predators Wolves, yeah. sharks, creatures like that move carefully around one another respectfully. Yeah. They all know that they're predators. There's an ecosystem. That we're, really we're seeing it in operation. And there's clearly a pecking order. Uh, Mr. Kendrick and Mr. Kennedy appear to be at the apex, at least in this room. Yeah. Um, they are the ones who are approached most often and in the most polite manner by the other kindred. Uh, the lowest, of course... The Anarchs over on the timeout bench. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the kids' table. Mm-hmm. Uh, how the kindred treat Odette is interesting. Uh, they unbend a little with her. They're a little more friendly. A little more, A little more real. And she seems to be exactly a who she is. That's been is my a experience. a little refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, compared to the rest of this shit. Mm-hmm. Mr. Drew keeps to himself. <laughs> He's acutely disinterested in conversing with anybody else. Yeah. And he avoids your gaze pointedly. Yeah. You're not even sure he's looked in any of your directions. Tonight. Yeah. 
He's at figured all. out a, such. A, he's figured out a way to keep from looking at us. Round about the cauldron go. She starts to speak in the poisoned entrails throw. Do you know the play? Uh, probably. It is the Scottish play. <laughs> no, but I'm gonna say I'll, I'll actually have that be as like probably. <laughs> <laughs> that is my very favorite of the Bard's plays. And do you know why, Mr. Keene? There is a scene in that play that reminds me of this room and of your future. The scene is where the titular character, Macbeth, yeah, oh, indeed. has come in from the field where he has done in his best friend. He approaches the feast. His wife is there. The nobles of his land are gathered. He has committed foul murder. The audience knows he did it. And all the lords and ladies know he did it. You can practically smell the blood on him. And nobody says anything. That's my favorite part. <clears throat> he is caught between two worlds, neither heaven nor hell. He is on the descent, but he has a chance to save himself. And yet he elects to wade forward in blood rather than go back because he claims it's easier just to let the tide of evil sweep him along. You will soon find yourself at the very same crossroads, the very same decision, Mr. Keene. And I am most eager to know what you will choose. Valentine, is it too late to stop you? I have spoken my truth. You know what I see. You will know the moment when it comes, Mr. Keene, and you must make the choice. I say, you know what? And then I take a couple steps forward, like back toward my friends and back to the rest of the party. You know, I'll look back over my shoulder and I say, I do regret it. They usually do. They usually do, Mr. Keene. And this, my friends, is where we end our vampire story. Woofta. For now.